Today is yet another session, grace session for that matter, of fellowship with the Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Father, and with Jesus Christ, the coming King, and with the Holy Spirit. It is the Sunday Light Fellowship Session of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. And as we have always informed, the Watchman is a place where God has graciously put his name, his word, his spirit, his power. And it is a place of revelation knowledge. It's a place where People encounter Jesus Christ, the coming King. It is a place where we worship God in spirit and in truth. And it's a place where God turns the stones of this life into pillars. It is my pleasure to remind us all that the Sunday Life Fellowship of the Watchman is a period of throwing the light of God's written word into the lives of whosoever will, so that it will be well with such persons here and hereafter. We are going to progress by joining our music team, as is usual, to draw some inspiration from the hymns that we're going to take, and even to use those hymns to honor the Lord. The first of the hymns selected for this uh, time is Abide With Me. Abide With Me. Fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When all the help has fell, and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. As joy grows dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changes not, abide with me. And in thy presence every passing hour, what but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Who like thyself my guide and stay can be through cloud and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee attend to bless. Ears have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where is grave victory? I triumph still, if thou abide with me. O thou, thy cross before my closing eye, shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me.
Next song is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. A Mighty Fortress is Our God. You have the Watchman hymnal, it is number 21. A Mighty Fortress is Our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he amid the flood of mortal is prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to walk us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate, on earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. We are not the right man on our side, the man of God owns choosing. Thus ask who that may be, cry Jesus, it is he, Lord Sabaoth is his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle.
Next is the song titled Pass Me Not O Gentle Savior. to pray now to prepare to receive what the Lord has for us this time around. You must open your mouth and heart and do yourself the great service of communion with God at such a time like this in order to receive the word of the Lord wherever you are. Open your mouth and Pray to God. Seek his face. This is a time of telephoning to heaven in order that we might be benefited by what the Lord has for us even at such a time like this. 
Eternal Father, I want to thank you, Heavenly Father, who is able to deliver. You are the able one. Thank you for such a time like this, Great Father in heaven. Thank you for everybody that has tuned in, has connected. Thank you for those that are going to connect much later on in the course of time. I thank you because your word is infallible. The word will pass away, the heavens and the earth will pass away. The word of the Lord abideth forever. I pray you, Lord in heaven, that back which you are for each and every person be granted to us all without exception. You're mighty in battle, mighty to deliver. Thank you very much. You're not come to fulfill some obligation. You come to do that which should be done, the appropriate thing, even at such a time like this. You have said of old, and rehearsed it into the ears of the people that listen to our master. Man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank you very much because your word is food. Thank you because uh, if anybody walks in the light of your word, the person will not walk in darkness. They will have the light of this life. Lord, let light be thrown to the hands of every person that is uh, connecting, every person that is washing without fear. I bless your name because I know you've answered. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Now hear the people everywhere say amen. amen. Once more welcome to the Sunday Light Fellowship session of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. We are continuing from a previous discourse and the title is the attributes of God and how they work in the circumstances of man. In the first discourse we had on this matter, we listed out the attributes, a number of attributes of God, which we can summarize as God's nature. And in that uh, uh, discourse, we just uh, listed them out and defined them. But in the following uh, sessions, we're going to show how each attribute works in the circumstances of men. And that is what we're beginning with this uh, uh, session in hand. And uh, the attribute of God that we are discussing, we are preaching on, is his understanding, God's understanding. I want to read a verse of scripture or two verses of scripture to that effect. Psalm 103. I'm reading verses 13 and 14. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Why? Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. He understands our constitution. He understands the constitution, the frailties, the inadequacies of the people that fear him. And he shows them understanding. So, you need to pay attention because these discourses are not meant to be something that is just undertaken for the sake of undertaking. They are meant to do great good unto every person. You know very well that we have uh, relationships. We have husband and wife relationship. We have uh, children 
and children relationship that is a sibling to sibling relationship, master and servant relationship, pastor and flock relationship, friend to friend relationship, and so on and so forth. The things that we are engaging ourselves into are meant to bring great good and heal the places and heal the relationships, heal the marriages and all other relationships. So they are not meant for uh, just the sake of uh, preaching. Once more, the attribute we are discussing is God's understanding. And from the portion of scripture that we have read, you can see that he is saying that God has understanding that uh, we are dust, that the people he is dealing with are not angels. They have flesh and blood. They are not uh, created the way the angels were created. The angels have celestial bodies, but these ones have terrestrial bodies. You know that God is the one that gave the base of the earth to have a different kind of body. The fishes in the sea have different kinds of body, and then the angels have different kinds of bodies, and then men have different kinds of body. He understands that we are dust and ashes, and because of that understanding, he shows mercy. Now listen to me. This attribute goes with his attribute of mercy, they go together. Now I have said that we are not dishing out these truths for the sake of dishing out, but they are meant to do good unto us. So take advantage of them. God's understanding and mercy walk at the same time. They are twin uh, uh, attributes that walk at the same time. Now I'm going to go through the scriptures to show how God manifested understanding and mercy because he knoweth the frame of the human beings that he is dealing with. Let's begin with the very first parents, that is Adam and Eve. God saw their uh, frailty, how that Satan came into the garden, had entered, had indwelt the serpent, and now went to deceive the woman, the more vulnerable. And uh, as a result of that, the woman took the fruit and gave to the husband, and they ate. And then when they ate, then they found that they were naked, and they began to know good and evil. Remember that we had said in times past that the arrangement of the Lord was that they should not die physical death. Therefore, he had in the garden of Eden uh, the tree of life. And we find that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for uh, food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the command was, you can eat every tree, don't eat this other tree. And then, uh, in the process of time, the intention was that, that they should stumble into the tree of life and live uh, and eat and then live forever in the garden, in the, in the paradise, and without any problems whatsoever. But unfortunately, the devil came and did that havoc. And now, these people now came to know good and evil. And then, when the Lord knew that, 
in his understanding, in his mercy. Now, look, these ones have been tricked by a super being. And what am I going to do? Am I going to allow them in the garden that they might now eat the tree of life and then live forever in their calamity, in their problem, in the very nature that they have acquired from Satan, they have lost the glory of God. And the Lord in his understanding now would not do that. What he did was that in verse uh, 21 of chapter 3, we have this record. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord make uh, coats of skin and clothe them. And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, to know good and evil. And now, lest they put forth their hand and uh, also take of the tree of life and eat and live forever in this condition, in this loss of glory. The glory has departed. And they were now into trouble. They have now connected themselves to Satan. And now the Lord said, if I allow this, now they will be connected to Satan and live forever in penury and in suffering. And so he needed to drive them out of the garden. That is what understanding does. Understanding takes note of the frailty takes note of the inadequacy of the person, takes note of the disadvantageous condition of the person. That is uh, the nature of understanding of the almighty God. Now, this nature of understanding of the almighty God also played out in the matter of uh, Cain and Abel. You know the story in Genesis chapter 4, in Genesis chapter 4, Cain had brought an offering of the fruits of the ground. He was a tiller of the ground, he was a farmer, but his brother was a husbandman, a rearer of sheep. And then but, uh, carelessly brought his, uh, his uh, offering uh, to fulfill some obligation, and instead of uh, doing the right thing, they had been brought up, they had known that uh, it is supposed to be sacrificed with animals and blood and fat and all that. He could have exchanged what he had with uh, what his brother Abel had. But he didn't do that. And then he, he carelessly did his own thing and then but uh, uh, genuinely and diligently his brother did his own. And you know, because God is a God of justice, we are going to come to that. God of justice and judge, God of fair play. He gives you what you qualify for. In the recent past, I had told that those that were wash, are washing that if you qualify for Esther, the Lord in his justice nature gives you Esther. He will not give you B, will not give you C. And if you merit C, he will not give you Esther because you don't merit it. Now, so he now accepted the offering of uh, Abel, and the offering of Cain was not accepted, and you know the story, Cain became envious, and then killed his brother. And now the Lord pronounced punishment against Cain. And now both Cain complained, and uh, let us look at uh, that from Genesis chapter uh, 4, and... Uh, from verse 11, the Lord was dishing out the curse. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Verse 14, Behold, thou hast driven me out 
this there from thy face, from the face of the earth one, and from the and from thy face shall I be hid too, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth three, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me for. This is too much for me, God. This is too much. And God is understanding this something, verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth can vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Listen to me. The Lord listened even to the plea of a murderer. And then will not allow him to just to die prematurely that way. So that was as a result of his understanding. His understanding was playing out, and the understanding plays out with mercy each time it is playing out. We want to go to the understanding and mercy of God that was at work when Elijah was tired and frustrated. Elijah the prophet, the great prophet, was tired at this point in time and was frustrated and then was running for his dear life. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we're reading from verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 19, reading from verse 1. And I have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And without how he has slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey, into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, a broom tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. But you know what? The Lord had understanding, and the Lord was saying, as it were, in fact, uh, laughing and uh, smiling, and said, See you. Prophet, you want to die, you want to commit suicide. But I have planned that you should not die the natural death of men. You are going to go in the rapture, in translation, like Enoch was taken. That is what I'm going to do. I see your case. You are frustrated. You are tired. I understand your case. And the Lord will not uh, strike him down and say, look at you, prophet. Look at you. Are you not the person that said to Ahab, as so long as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no rain, no dew, all these three and a half years, according to my word? How come that you are now feeble? How come that you are now jittery? The Lord did not do that. He knew that he was a human being, and uh, he came and helped him, and in the course of time, he helped him to fulfill his ministry. He arranged some food, some divine food that now enabled this man to do the long journey to Mount Horeb. And after that long journey, 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb, he needed to go through all the way from Egypt. Egypt is at the southern border of Israel. And then there is the border city that is called Elat. And then from Elat, he now traveled all the whole length to the north, to Syria, the northern border. God, in his understanding, was the one that facilitated that. He knew that this man was a human being. God's understanding is at work at every point in time with mercy following it. Now, the understanding that God manifested toward his disciples. This time around, it was the Lord Jesus Christ that manifested that understanding. When they manifested uh, faithlessness, you know what? 
that he had been with them for quite some time, a long time. And then, but uh, they were not improving the way he expected them to improve. Now, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, we read this account. Matthew, chapter 17. And we read verse 14 downwards. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, grievously troubled, tormented. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire, and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus Christ answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer, allow your faithlessness, accommodate your faithlessness, bring him he done to me. They are born with him, and uh, they are appropriating, they are appropriating with a boon that they should have learned, they should have grown, they should have been able to cast out that devil, but they were not able. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ knew that by the complaint of the father of the person, now he said, he just made a comment, oh, faithless generation, how long will I be with you before you improve and become like me? How long will I permit and uh, accommodate your faithlessness? But it did not drive them away. It did not call them names further. It did not derogate them. It did not say, look at you. You came to me over the past one year, two years, and you're not getting anything now. Get out from my side. It did not do that. He had understanding. And he finished that and stopped there. Now, at another time, more critical time, he manifested great understanding toward his disciples. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, I am reading verse 36 downwards. Matthew 26 and 36 downwards. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took him with him, Peter, and uh, the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy with sorrow, with emotional pain, turmoil. Then said he to them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. I want you to stay here and pray. I want to hear your voice. I want some kind of consolation from you. I want some kind of uh, friendship. I want some kind of boosting of mind. That's what he requested at the hand of these people. And verse 39, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Do you know what? That even the Lord Jesus Christ had that knew that this uh, cup should not pass from him. Remember that earlier he had put a blessing and honor upon Simon Peter because Simon Peter had known that he was the Messiah, the son of the living God. But shortly after, now as he was going and then going to Jerusalem, he now informed them of what was going to happen in Jerusalem where, where he was going to be arrested I was going to be put into judgment and condemned and crucified. And I, Peter, in mercy, said, Lord, such a person like you 
should not experience this. And he said, get behind me, you Satan. Now, he knew that that death of the cross was inevitable. It was non-negotiable. But at this point in time, he was even wanting that death to be negotiated. That shows you the type of situation he had in his mind, in his emotions, and then wanted these people to be uh, a source of uh, consolation, a source of strength. But what happened? Verse 39, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. And he commented unto his disciples and finding them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not wash with me one hour? Wash and pray, but you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Take note that the person that was saying this was the one that we have said he was fully man and fully God. Now verse 42, and he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. There you are. The eyes of the people were heavy, and they were dozing and snoring. And then verse 43 says, And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Verse 44 and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. But look, in his understanding, he did not leave them there. Stay here, go ahead and sleep, snore, and then take your rest. But on a second thought, because he had knowledge that these people were weaklings. Now he said in verse 46, rise, let us be going. Behold, he is a hand that doth betray me. That's understanding playing out. Now I want to show how that there were people that had the spirit of God of old who also showed understanding and mercy showed understanding and mercy. I want to read the case of uh, Abraham toward his nephew, Lot. In Genesis chapter 13, and I am reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 13, reading from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had and lot with him into the south. And Abraham was very rich in cattle and in silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, and they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of, uh, of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and Perizzite dwell in the land. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take to the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes. And behold, we heard all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered. There you are, everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lord shows him all the plain 
of Jordan. And Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land, in the land of Canaan. Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain, and peace is turned towards Sodom. Listen to me. Lord was not called by God. Abraham was. Lord was just a nephew to Abraham. And now he has grown, and it was at the hand of Abraham, he was an inheritor of the blessing of Abraham. And then at this point in time, they were now very rich, and Abraham said, do you make your choice? It was foolishness of him to make the choice. Your uncle brought you out here, and now you have improved, you have grown on the merit of your uncle, not on your merit, and then he now asked you to choose, and you chose. But you know what? Now he shows the good but the bad place. He shows the good but the evil place. And then, you know what? Now there was this war, and then he was taken, and his goods, and everything that he had. But Abraham, in his understanding, would not say, it serves you right. Choose the place now. He didn't say that. This was uh, a child. This was, uh, this is my nephew. He didn't understand anything. And then because of that understanding, he showed him mercy and arranged uh, the children and the soldiers that were trained in his own house, born in his house. And he pursued those uh, that uh, captured that lot and brought lot back and brought everything back understanding was playing, just like God would show understanding and mercy. And because he had the spirit of God, he showed understanding and mercy like, uh, like God would show. Now, it's the same thing that uh, was uh, manifested, the understanding that uh, Abraham showed to his wife. Let's see in Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, reading from verse 1. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had a maid, a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and Hagar conceived. And when Hagar saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despising in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. Do you see that? The wrong that I have suffered, let it be upon you. But now, but it is Sarah that made this arrangement. Now, you're now saying, Now the consequence of the something, now the wrong I suffered at the hand of the maid, let it be upon you. And Abraham had great understanding. She understood that this is but a woman. That this is a weaker vessel. We would not join issues. So that was understanding, playing. Playing alongside mercy. And Abraham would not join issues. Uh, are you not the person that gave me the woman? And then Abraham said in verse 6, Unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleased thee. And when Sarah dared hardly with her, she fled from her face. That's the understanding of God, the attribute of understanding of God, how it is manifesting. Now we have the case of Elisha toward the Shunammite woman. Now, you know what? The Shunammite woman had uh, show that this is a man of God and we need to treat him very well. And that brought her some reward. And now 
Uh, Elisha said, what can we do for this woman that have shown us this great uh, goodness, you know, which we didn't ask. And then he said, he doesn't have a child. And then, and uh, the prophet prophesied, about this time next year, you are going to embrace a son. And that happened. And then, but in the course of time, that child became ill and died. And then the woman saddled the ass and said to the servant, run. Speed, unless I bid you to stop. And then when he came to Elisha, he fell down and grabbed the feet of Elisha. Did I ask you of a child? See what has happened? Now, but by the time she, she thrust herself down and grabbed the feet of Elisha, now the servant of Elisha, the overzealous man, like we have overzealous people, now... Somebody comes to church and it's a newcomer. Of a zealous people will now disgrace the person. Because the person is wearing some attire that is not good. The of a zealous person now wants to push the woman down. A woman that was into bitterness of soul. Push her down. Push her up. Why do you touch my master? And then Elisha said, leave her alone. Something is wrong. And that is understanding how it works. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ showed understanding unto Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus, you remember his case? Let's see his case. In answer of Apostle, the seventh chapter, let's read. From verse 54, Acts 7. And verse 54, when they had these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, at Stephen, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses let down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Saul was accessory to this thing. Saul was uh, accepting it. Deal with him. These are some of the people that are wanting to change Judaism. The father's religion which we received. Deal with him. Deal with him ruthlessly. And they put their address on him. And uh, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down. And cried with a loud voice, Lord, let not this sin to their charge. And uh, when he had said this, he fell asleep. Even here we find that Stephen had understanding. These people didn't know what they were doing. They were persecuting. They were trying to undo these people because for them, they were undoing that which the Father had given them, Judaism. Now, these people are talking about one Christ, whom we don't understand, and then they must die, and that this person must die. And then Stephen understood that, that these people didn't know what they were doing. And his understanding led him to have mercy upon them, and then he prayed that God should not reckon on their sin, that God should forgive their sin. And verse 1 of chapter 8 says, And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Syria and Samaria, except the apostles. Now look at the, some detail or summary of what that Saul did. In Galatians, Chapter 1, we are reading 
from verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that we might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon uh, removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Now, verse 11 says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation, my manner of life. In time past, in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. This was the preoccupation of this man. This man was wanting to preserve Judaism. And he was doing that in ignorance with all his heart. He didn't understand what this new faith means. And then, but the Lord Jesus Christ and God, they were, they were washing, they had understanding. It didn't strike him down, no. They had understanding. This man is just manifesting zeal. This man was a Pharisee and then was not a hypocritical Pharisee because he testified and said, as far as keeping the law of Moses was concerned, I was blameless. Concerning zeal toward that religion, I persecuted the church in ignorance. And then they understood the ignorance of uh, this man, the father, the son, understood the ignorance of this man. And then had understanding and then mercy. And knew that... By the time this individual is shown the writing, is shown that this thing that he was going against has superseded the thing that he was wanting to preserve. That he will put in all his life. He will go full throttle. He will go full ball. That was understanding. And so they excused him until in his madness, as it were, he went after them and going to Damascus. And then he was brought down and shown the way. That is what understanding is all about. God's understanding and mercy. What is the application for us? Did I not say that we have relationships? We have a husband and wife relationship. We have father-children relationship. And here we are in the church. Here we are in the church. And then there are those that do not have understanding. They don't show understanding at all. They don't show understanding to the youth, to the young people that are being bombarded by every evil from every side. Unlike in their day, they were not bombarded as the children of the present day are bombarded. Bombarded by the obnoxious and nasty and hooliganistic things that are happening, that are being pushed into, into the web. And for these people to get their lives destroyed. Those things were not there in times past. And so, the people that don't have understanding, they even cost their children at every given, at every turn of life, every little thing they do now, they place a cause, they say dangerous things to them. They say dangerous things to them. They don't manifest any understanding at all. What about children who don't show understanding at all unto their parents? They now, they now just don't bother. They, they say, you are old school. 
And then they wouldn't bother saying, my parents are weak, my parents are sick, my parents do not have a good health again. Let me show understanding. Let me do something so that I don't make them to die prematurely. Where is the understanding and the mercy that God is showing even unto the world? Understanding and mercy God is showing to the world. The present world is in not worse than the world of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord is having understanding because why? He knows that at the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, the devils were not operational the way they are operational today. They know, the devils know that their time is almost up. And so the one third of the angels of Satan and then with his human angel, they have gone up to undo, to do great havoc unto the sons of men. And God has understanding. And God in his understanding is arranging his own tutors of his angels and with his men angels to now give fire for fire, word for word, program for program in his understanding. The question is, where is the understanding of the parent? Where is the understanding of the child? Where is the understanding of siblings to siblings? The senior one, now knowing that this junior one, they don't have what I have. They don't know what I want, what I know. Where is the understanding of those that claim to be born again, which they show to those that are yet to be born again? Where is the understanding? Where is the understanding that the husband is showing to the wife as a weaker vessel? Now, there are people that are refusing what God said. They say, I am not a weaker vessel. I am a strong vessel. They call them feminists. I'm a strong vessel. Don't call me a weaker vessel. My friend, you are joking. You are a weaker vessel. Now, why did you cry on the thing that uh, men don't cry about. If you are a strong man. Why were you crying concerning a matter that people don't cry about? Why is it that uh, you just lost uh, uh, pregnancy and then for four days you didn't eat? And you are mourning and you are crying. And your husband is going about doing his business. You tell me a strong man. Why is it you are a strong person and then are during vigil and then you are dozing, you are sleeping? You are a strong person, you are not. You are soft and that is a fantastic credit to you. So take that credit. It's a fantastic credit. Your body is not the body of the man. Your body is soft, so take the credit and be happy with that. Don't desire to have the body of a man. The body of a man is the body of uh, Iroko tree, Iroko wood. So, say where you should stay. Now, the question we're asking, where is the understanding that the husbands are showing to their wives? People who say that they are Christians. Now, if you have understanding, there will be no uh, domestic violence. Domestic violence will not exist if there is understanding that the man has toward the woman. There will be no domestic violence. But you know that domestic violence is existing all over the world. All over the world. And they are killing themselves because of lack of understanding. Now, lady, if you have understanding and then you know that you are more intelligent than your husband, now, should you not kill the man? Look at you. Who told me to marry you? It is because you don't have understanding. Now, but this is the attribute that God and the children of God should have. I've talked about sibling to sibling. The senior ones showing understanding to the junior ones, and the junior ones showing understanding. Listen to me. You have some sick person around you. Those are that are taking care of sick people and old people. Don't you know that when people are growing old, except they have the spirit of God, they will begin to depreciate 
in their brain, in their memory. And they begin to say something. They can say nasty things. But they didn't do that intentionally. And you are there and you become angry. And you begin to curse them in your mind. And you are walking in the place where they are taking care of old people. And then you curse them in their mind. Instead of manifesting understanding like a Christian. Now, where is the understanding of uh, the pastor? Where is the understanding of uh, the people that are stronger? The people that have more faith. The people that have more faith. The people that are stronger in their mindset. Where is the understanding they are showing to these other people? Are they just uh, snubbing them and saying this one? Is he a Christian? This old lady, is he a Christian? Because the person manifests some fear. Then you say he's not a Christian. Now, you come around and say, look at that. Coronavirus has made you to faint. Are you a Christian for that matter? You are not a Christian. Come on, put on faith. If you have faith, from which market did you buy it? If you have faith, how much did you pay for it? I want to ask you, did you not read the scripture that says that none can by any means redeem his brother, nor give a ransom for him? Did you not read another one that says that uh, whatsoever we have, it is God that maketh one to differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? There are those that make, that are arrogant, and they run down other people because they have some advantage. Advantage that they didn't merit. Instead of pitying these other people in understanding and showing them mercy. Now, I'm asking you, you are in church. Do you have understanding? You are, you are privileged and you have plenty of money. You have the way with us to survive. In fact, you have everything to your fee. Now, where is your understanding toward the people that are not able? God, because of understanding, listen to me, because of understanding, he instituted socialism. Now, the only thing that made socialism as the practice of old before God broke it down is the fact that they removed God from it. But God, God's way is socialism. You eat and let another person eat. You build and let another person build. You have and let another person have. When they were receiving the manna, the bread, the food from on high in the wilderness, you know what? Now there was a measure, a measure for this individual. If a man had seven people in his house, that measure, when he collected everything, then they will measure. One measure for this person, second person, third person, fourth person, fifth person, sixth person, seventh person, and the rest, he will, he will let go for the people that we are not able. That's understanding. We are not able to go early enough. We are not able to, uh, to, to gather much. That's understanding. That is what God instituted. That's what understanding will do. So, in the understanding and mercy that we are talking about, where do you stand? Look at the understanding that uh, uh, the father of faith, Abraham, showed unto uh, Sarah. Sarah was the person that created the problem. She said, take this maid and go into her. But eventually I will get a child through her. And the maid became pregnant. And then, and then her ego was boosted. And now she now began to disregard her mistress. And then he turned around and said to Abraham, the wrong this person is doing to me, let it be upon you. It's not a cost. Did Abraham give her an upper court? Like many men will do today. Give your wife an upper court. And then give your child an upper court. And give your sibling, the junior one, an upper court. And there are people that give upper court in the church, even ushers, but they didn't use their fists. 
They use their mouth to give the upper court. Who told you to wear this kind of thing and come to church? Now, understanding and mercy. Now, even the Lord showed understanding unto somebody that was very wicked and killed his brother. Listen to me. And then God showed understanding to somebody that was persecuting. I remember that uh, uh, a long, long ago, there was this man that was persecuting the wife. And then, and badly persecuting the wife. And one day, the word of knowledge came for the woman. The name of the man was called. And the woman was told that this person that was persecuting you is going to be a preacher. Now listen to me. And eventually that thing happened. If the woman did not have understanding, would that thing happen? It will not happen. If you don't have understanding, you will not be able to win anybody. You will not be able to win anybody. Everybody that misbehaves, uh, you write the person off and, and say, God, kill them. You will not be able to win your father. You will not be able to win your relatives. You will not be able to win your countrymen. Now, listen to me. Did you take note that there are people that when you talk about uh, uh, religion, because meanwhile they are ignorant. If you talk about Jesus, they say, get out. What are you talking about? Who is he? Where does he live? But that they are doing in ignorance. But these people are salvable. Do you know that these people can be saved in the course of time? Let me share a testimony with you. That was this person that was close to me. And he was a, a bus driver and made money in, with that. And then his attitude was uh, he would uh, go for booze, uh, drink the beer, and then he was returning one day, listen to me. And then an evangelist has arranged uh, an open air crusade in a city. And then he came by the fence where the crusade was holding, where the evangelist was talking about Jesus. And from across the fence, he shouted at the, at the evangelist, shut up your mouth. Shut up your mouth, you are a liar. You are drunk, you are lying. Shut up your mouth. And the evangelist didn't do anything. I know another person that came to one of our, our pastors where he was preaching in, the, in an overseas country in the, in the city square, and then was talking, and somebody passed there and said, shut up your mouth, shut up your mouth. And the brother didn't do anything, didn't go, go after him. And this evangelist didn't do anything. Do you know what happened? I happened to know this person. And then one of the days, I said to him, follow me to fellowship, follow me to church. That was in 1976. And I don't know how God just made him not to argue. The person that was saying to the evangelist, you are a liar, shut up your mouth. Now, followed me to fellowship, and that same day, gave his life to Christ and became regenerated. Can I announce to you that he has been a pastor for near 30 years now? Praise God. Praise God. Where is the understanding that uh, the husband should show to their wives? And where is the understanding that wives should manifest to them? Where is the understanding that uh, the... Uh, Senior ones and the elderly ones, the people that have that advantage that have advantage over some people. Where is the understanding? Understanding is this: that you should look at the condition of this person and see that this person is capacitated. This person is doing this thing because he doesn't understand anything because he is frail. The people that are working in the hospital, the nurses. Here we go. Where is your understanding? When you find people that are in pain, do you know that if somebody had had an accident and there is a fracture, either on the hand or on the leg, that the pain will be so much and the person will be screaming throughout the night? I have experienced that. I was hospitalized in 1962. And by my bed, by the right, a man had traveled with uh, his driver, and then on the highway, there was an accident, and uh, that man broke his arm and broke his leg. 
And they brought him to the hospital where I was hospitalized. And the doctor rushed and then went to the theater, did the cast on him, and they put the man next to my bed. And throughout the night, I didn't sleep. The man was shouting and shouting. But I pitied him. I did not say change my position. This man is disturbing me. This man was in pain. I was about 16 years. This man was 30 something years. Where is the understanding of the Christian? Now, I read in Isaiah chapter 40, and let's take some lesson from this place. Isaiah chapter 40. Reading from verse uh, 1. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people said, you are God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Listen to me. God has chastised the people for their iniquity. But because of understanding, these are my people. These are the descendants of Abraham. Now I change my mind. Comfort them. Now a savior was coming. They have received at the hand of the Lord double for their iniquities. But I need to suffer that now. Verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, repair ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert the highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough place is plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the godliness thereof is at the flower of the field. The grass withered, the flower faded, because the spirit of the Lord blew it upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold, ye are God. Jesus was coming, the Savior, the King. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his walk before him. Jesus coming the second time to rule. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. Gently lead those that are with young. Gently attend to the pregnant woman. Gently attend to the children, the women that are nursing mothers. Gently attend to people that are weak. Gently attend to pastor. Let me ask you, what kind of pastor are you? Are you the kind of pastor that is portrayed in Psalm 23? Like David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want protection. And then his sheep didn't want protection. Of course, you know that the sheep could go this way and go that way, but he will arrange them and lead them. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He restored my soul as I restored even the sheep. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness, for he named said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because thou art with me thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The shepherd will use his rod and his staff to arrange the people. Let me ask you, what kind of a pastor are you? Are you the one that said, let nobody disturb me? I have gone to bed. Nobody should disturb me. No. Who told you to let that person come in? Did I kill Jesus? 
Should I not rest? And then you are shouting. And then you are shouting. And then you are talking. And then the people become scattered. They become discouraged. Or are you the person that makes them to be encouraged because you, under, you understand? You understand that they are babes. When they talk like babes, what do you do? If you have understanding, you should know that this in person that is reacting like this is reacting because he's a babe. He doesn't understand much about what Christianity is all about. I am by no means saying that the people that we are saying we should show understanding should now exploit that. Take advantage of that. I will remain ignorant. I will remain foolish. I will remain lowly so that they will continue to show me understanding. I will remain a sinner. Doesn't follow that way. If you do that, the Lord will know that you are deliberately being, you are deliberately being weak. And then he will judge you for being weak deliberately. So we are talking about the nature of God and the attributes of God, the characteristics of God. One, the first one, understanding. Understanding goes with mercy. It was manifested. Understanding goes with mercy. Remember, Jesus Christ kept uh, an appointment for a dinner. And then the person that invited uh, him, now a woman that uh, knew that was a grave sinner, terrible sinner, came around and then bowed and knelt down and was weeping and the tears from her eyes were falling upon uh, the feet of Jesus. And he was cleaning the something with the hairs of her head. Do you know what? Women cherish their hair. But at this point in time, this woman now was cleaning the something with that cherished element of her body. And now this uh, holier than thou person, this man, if he, was, uh, if he was a man of God, a prophet indeed, you should have known. You should have known that this be a sinner. Now, you are not a sinner. This is a sinner. But Jesus Christ had understanding. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Her grievous iniquity is forgiven. Leave her alone. That's understanding. If there is understanding, there will be less commotion and there will be less problems in the church. If there is understanding that the people in church that want to show, there will be many, many people coming into the kingdom through their understanding. You will pray and pray and pray for the person that is not responding meanwhile because you are believing that somehow, someday, he will respond. You will pray for your children and pray and pray and pray and pray and not give up because you have understanding that what is pummeling them is much. You will pray and pray and pray for your neighbor, pray and pray for the people that are persecuting, pray and pray for your wife and for your husband, and children who are born again will continue to, continue to persuade their parents who have not come to know anything, they will continue to persuade and continue to be obedient and continue to be loyal in the things that are not seen. Understanding goes with mercy. Let me round up with uh, what we have in the scriptures. We have read Isaiah. He said he will attend to those people that are with young very cautiously. Attend to the people that are low. Attend to the people that are incapacitated. I tend to the people that are weeping because they have lost some loved ones and they are crying and crying uncontrollably and then you attend to them. You don't come around and say, che, I thought that you are, you are a, a real believer having faith. What is the matter with you? In Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 1, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Restore such a person with understanding. 
considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Show understanding unto that person that is ailing. That person that is not able to wake up to do what the person should do. Show understanding, listen to me, unto that individual that received a bad G from the forefathers. Show understanding. Nobody that is in this world that is not, did not receive something from the forefather, from the forebears. Show understanding to that girl that received bad G, received a violent G. So understanding to that boy that received a violent G. Show understanding to that person that received a stubborn G. And the person that received a, a, a nasty a sexual G. And then is uh, misbehaving. Don't smite with your mouth or with your hand. Pray to the Lord. Try to understand that this individual show understanding to the person that is behaving as a result of uh, the position. Show understanding. Somebody comes around and is possessed. And then, and then they came around in church and then came to the pastor. The next moment he says, Pastor, get out from here. You're a nasty man. And then the usher came. And drew the woman out. And drew the man out. Are you insulting our pastor? People that don't have understanding. Somebody is talking by the devil. And then you, you went to use violence to attend to the person. It will not work. Understanding. Now, let me ask you. If the Lord did not show understanding, even in the day that you were wallowing in sin before you became born again, would you not have killed you long ago? Listen to me, I give you this testimony. During the war in Nigeria, war is known as the Nigerian Biafra War. I was a young man, 22 to 23 years. And then my home was uh, where the airport that sustained the Biafra side was. The airport was two miles from my from my home. And then the planes, as they come to land, whether it was the relief plane, the jumbo jet planes that came to bring relief, or the jet fighters that came to bomb, we would almost see the, see the pilot. It would be very low. And then as young men, at that time we were not born again. Life was not anything anymore. You know what we'll say when the jet fighter has banked this way, it was going this way, and it banks this way, ready to fire the, the, the rocket or ready to drop the bombs. You know what we say? We say, why not drop the bomb here? Where are you going to the airport for? Drop the bomb so that we can die. Now, if... God did not have understanding. Now, the bomb will have uh, dropped. Do you know that what happened that one day? One day, my uncle, my uncle's house was by the left. And you know what? And the plane was coming and fired a rocket. And the rocket hit the, the place where my uncle and his wife had made their food, but they had left the kitchen and then gone inside. And now the thing did not scatter everything, but it did not kill anybody. Suppose it had killed me, would I be a pastor today? We were in ignorance. We were saying, let's die. But God knew that this man would uh, be uh, somebody that God will use in the course of time, understanding. And he did not allow us to die, even though we wish to die. Understanding of God. In Second Peter we're reading from chapter 1 and verse 1. 
Someone, Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them, that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these great and precious promises you might be partakers of the divine nature of God. God desires that we should have some substantial measure of the divine nature of God. And we are talking about the nature of God. And we have taken the matter, the aspect of it that is known as understanding and mercy. Now the question is, somebody that says that he is a believer, where is your portion of the divine nature of God, even in the matter of understanding and mercy? You are a ruler, political ruler, and you don't have understanding. If you don't have understanding, you are going against God, and God is going against you. Because the understanding makes it mandatory, makes somebody to see that all these people are incapacitated, so I need to do something to help them. That is what it ought to be. And whosoever that is not doing that is going against God. So, if you want to have this nature of God, it is time to tell the Lord, of course, I need it. This is what we settle cases. This is what we put peace, even in the midst of the people, in the relationships. Now, if you are not a child of God, there is no way you can manifest that something that is an attribute in God. An attribute in God can only be brought, can only be taken from God. And if you have not gotten the spirit of God, how do you get the attribute? So, it is necessary that whether you be in or out, if you are in, in the kingdom, let us begin to think about and pursue this great aspect of God's nature. The understanding nature. We have seen how it works. We see now it worked in the matter of Cain. You have seen how it worked in the matter of Abraham and his wife. You have seen how it was between Elisha and the Shulamite. You have seen how it worked in the matter of the prophet that was fatigued. You have seen how it worked when Jesus Christ was in need of his disciples. In need of their help, but they didn't come. They didn't come to his aid, but he didn't strike them. Today, what we see is, is something that is not Christianity. But now, this is Christianity. This is the word of God. He says, we are supposed to have some substantial measure of the nature of God. Therefore, if you say, I'm a believer, you want to make the rapture, where is the nature of God in you? Jesus is coming for his people. The Bible tells us in Gospel according to St. John that of his fullness have we received, grace for grace, of the fullness of Jesus. He had understanding. He accommodated, he had understanding on Saul of Tarsus and did not strike him. And then eventually he now showed him the way and saved him. And it became very useful. Pastor, show understanding. Woman of Asia, show understanding. Unto the people around. Unto the ones under you. Walker, show understanding. Evangelist, show understanding. Don't curse the people because they have not given their life to Christ yet. Don't say, it serves them right. All my relatives, let them go to hell. I don't care. Where is your understanding? This is a time for anybody that have listened to this to say, wow, this is true Christianity. This is what the Lord is demanding 
that we do. Now, we need to sing a song, and that song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, great understanding. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Jesus Christ is a friend indeed. He had understanding and still has understanding. And we receive whosoever that comes to him, irrespective of how far you have gone. How far you have gone will not make him to refuse you. Understanding. Now, take understanding today. Take it as part of what you want to get from the Lord. And when you get it, the houses, the relationships will be here. Let's go to the song. sing that song and uh, we look at the lines uh, let's ensure that we are attending to ourselves or we're asking ourselves uh, whether we ought not to be like what is recorded concerning Jesus song number two three four pass me not a gentle savior Yeah. 
Understanding that God had toward Adam and Eve, and will not want them to remain forever on the surface of the earth in pain and in the loss of their glory, and then drove them out in their interest. And now that he showed understanding unto Cain, you ask yourself, do I show understanding on the people that have erred? As somebody that is standing, as a pastor, as a mother, as a father, as a senior sibling, why should you understand it? to the naughty boy and to the naughty girl? Even unto the person that has insulted me, look at the understanding that Abraham showed toward the wife. The wife was the person that brought the matter. And I turned the something to Abraham. And Abraham did not uh, react. Abraham did not call her names. What about the understanding that was manifested toward uh, the man, the prophet, that was a wonderful prophet, but at this point in time, he was now sick. He was now discouraged, and he wanted to die. He wished himself dead committed suicide as it were. But God will not kill him. God will not say, ah, prophet, prophet, will not call him names. Will not call him names. And somebody hears that somebody has fallen, somebody has entered into sin, and then the person is mocking and saying, I thought he was a pastor. Now ah, look at them. You are standing, and how is it that you are standing? Show understanding. Your wife is sick, show understanding. All the people that don't bother about their wives when they are sick, they are looking for, they are looking for enjoyment. Where is your understanding? Where is your understanding? The thing is causing commotion. 
All the people that their husbands are not well and they have some problem and they are, uh, they are into some emotional torment and the wife doesn't bother about that. He wants a joy in the bed. Where is your understanding? All the children, where is your understanding? Where, are, where is the understanding of the children toward their parents? What about the understanding that uh, Jesus Christ manifested toward his uh, people? People that followed him. And then, but that was this time that he needed them badly, but they were not showing up. They were not interested. Now you need your wife badly, but your wife is, doesn't have understanding as to what you are going through. You need your husband badly, but your husband is not showing forth as he should. Your husband is not born again, and he doesn't bother. You need to show understanding because uh, there is no way you can do better in the condition of unregeneration. Take note of that. We say we are Christians. Where is Christ likeness in the Christian? Christianity is ebbing away. If we allow the things that are happening to happen and the next 50 years passes in this type of situation, will that be Christian again? The Lord Jesus Christ asked the question in Luke chapter 18 and said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find the Christianity? Will he find those that, that are keeping the way of the Lord? Will he find those that are manifesting faith? Will he find those that are uh, pro progressing what he left? This is a time to pray. This is not uh, rhetoric. This is a time of seeking to have the understanding of the Lord. Eternal Father, I thank you. Thank you because of the understanding that we see in Stephen. I made him to pray for those that were killing him. Oh, wonderful thing. The understanding we saw in Christ Jesus to pray for the people that nailed him to the cross. Father, forgive them for they didn't know what they were doing. Those people were hired. They didn't know what they were doing. They were soldiers. And so they didn't know what they were doing. Soldiers only know to kill. And they were told to kill. To torture. And then you know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, these ones, are, their business is to kill. And they have been given commandment to kill. They don't know what they were doing. Understanding. Like I said, Father, pity his children. So the Lord pity them that fear him. Because you know what? Our incapacitations. I bless your name, O Lord. Because the Bible says, likewise also, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. But we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit. And he answereth our prayers because the Spirit maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Have you not been accommodating our lack of, uh, of strength, eternal Father in glory? When we should manifest uh, faith, we are manifesting fear. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for anybody that is calling upon God and saying, I want to have a measure of the nature of God. I want to have uh, some substantial measure of the fullness of Christ. Because what is, what is stated in Ephesians, until we all begin to have uh, some substantial measure of the fullness of Christ. Christ is coming for those that have some substantial measure. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for everybody that is praying. Because I know that the word has gone out and does not return to the void. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for those that are coming into the kingdom. Thank you for those that are saying, this is true. This is true Christianity. Thank you for those that we are recovering. Thank you for the minds that are hard, that we are melting. Thank you for those that are repenting. 
for what they have done unto their wives, unto their husbands, unto their children, unto their parents, unto their siblings, unto their relatives. Because they lack understanding and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the enablement that you have given to me to dish out the word. Lord, as we continue in this series, the series of God's attributes and how they walk in the circumstances of men. Lord, I believe that all the totality of what you have scheduled will be made manifest unto the sons of men. Thank you for answer to prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And I hear them saying amen everywhere. Amen. 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 Amen.